Hello everyone, hope you're doing Ari. So Steve Bruce has been flapping his gums on Talk Sport yesterday. We're going to drop in and have a little listen to what he's been saying. Yep, hello everybody. The word victim is used quite a bit, yeah. I'd love to be a victim and get £8 million payoff. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have a use lot like. But uh, let's break it down what Steve Bruce has said. I absolutely adored the I adored the job. I loved going to work on it, even though it was it was it was in COVID. It was it was difficult, and look, I, I just think I was the victim. It's a bit like when I managed Sunderland. You know, I said in ten years' time, well, they'll look back and think, you know, that, that fella did an all right job. So he reckons he's a victim. Okay. You might have also heard him say that we lost Mitrovic. Just want to pause there for a second. We didn't lose Mitrovic when Bruce joined. Mitrovic left the club 18 months prior to that, if you remember. He went on loan to Fulham. And then six months later, that deal was made permanent. So that was made permanent 12 months before Steve Bruce's arrival. He's totally forgot which striker he's on about. That striker was Solomon Rondon, who wanted to stay at the club. And the club didn't even bother making him an offer. The other striker, who he's totally forgot there, was Iose Press. So... I'll tell him who the strikers are at Newcastle, shall I? My remit was, we'd gone in after Rafa, who'd finished 12th. We'd lost. We'd lost Mitrovic, and we'd lost the other centre-forward who went to Leicester. Um, and we'd, so we'd lost the two strikers. Now, I said to we'll come back to coming in, love coming into work. I might have stayed recently had to apologise, if you remember, for our comments made in Saudi Arabia, which I made a video about, checking up on the channel. Link is in the description where she said that Steve Bruce didn't want to come into work. We all knew what Amanda Stavely had said. I think she's covering it because she's covering it, obviously, being legal legal proceedings against her. Now, that was a tongue-in-cheek by Amanda Stavely. What she basically meant is that the players had a lot of time off. They had extra days off. Even one of their own players right now, Sean Longstaff, not so long ago said that under Eddie Howe, he feels like he's getting coached. I mean, does that tell you its own story? If you go onto Google and just search, there'll be players who've criticised Steve Bruce in the past for his training methods. I don't have to tell you that. Go and have a look on Google. Pause the video now. Go and have a look. Players will come up. It's absolutely beyond a joke. And look, we weren't a great watch. I understand that too. And I do believe a Newcastle team of why Newcastle have enjoyed under Eddie is up and at them. You know, they're full of life and full of enthusiasm. We didn't have the team to play like that. And I knew that's what the Newcastle fans wanted. But we didn't have a team, so we were, you know, I would like to think, very, very well organised, difficult to beat, difficult to play against, and had a bit of, in St Maximum, a little bit in mm. Almiron, a little bit of magic up the top end of the pitch. He admits that the football was poor. My God, it made McLaren look like an absolute saint. Speaking of saints, we'll come back to one of those in a minute. Because he was the media darling, because he was a nice guy and, you know, he kept Newcastle up twice and fair play, he did. That's the credit I will give Steve Bruce. But my God, the football was awful. It was shocking going home and away, even after COVID. It was absolutely dreadful. When he was sacked, Newcastle were literally the root the bottom of the Premier League, if you remember, after getting beat off Spurs. I really, really enjoyed it. I can say I really enjoyed it. It became tough, of course, but I think I was the victim of... The whole club at the, at the time were desperate for the takeover. And, you know, we're talking about financial fair play and all the rest of it. You know, a club would never be in any distress under under Mike Ashley. And obviously he's been compared to Rafa Benitez quite a bit by the media darlings, I'll call him that. Remember, Rafa Benitez didn't have a £40 million striker. Bruce didn't even know what to do with him. But as soon as Eddie Howe comes in, he sees a move, there's a potential player in midfield, and becomes a superstar. How can Steve Bruce not even say that? How can he not even say that? £40 million striker. Granted, all these transfers when he first come in probably aren't his. But then you have an £80 million winger who basically kept you up that season. Now, Rafa Benitez would love that kind of money. You never got anywhere near that kind of money. 12 months later, you then got a left back for £15 million. It was an absolute flop and still on Newcastle's books on loan in the Championship. And then he got a strike on Callum Wilson for 18 million, who basically kept him up again the second season with St. Maximin. But Rafa Benitez didn't get anywhere near that. 
Thankfully, I'm not on social media. I am aware of it, don't get me wrong. But is there any, any good news on social media about anything or anybody? I'm not so sure. So if you are vulnerable, I, would, I do worry about people who are a little bit vulnerable and they're getting this level of abuse on social media. I do believe it was driven by social media because the vast amount of people that I bump into or around the streets of Newcastle were great. But despite having a massive payoff up to room at £8 million for the staff, Bruce basically become a millionaire. And we're talking millions. But yeah, he wants to play the victim. Nah, not for me.